hope that you uh, stay around and, and let us greet you. Our next time of service is this coming Sunday morning, uh, Bible study at 9 o'clock in the, in the morning and in the main worship hour at 10, and we hope that you make plans to be with us. Some updates. Uh, Tim gave uh, really good updates during the class. If you weren't in here, here's kind of a quick flyby. Uh, Lois has been moved to Health South, which is that's obviously great. And uh, for rehab, he's in room 314. Erlene Kilpatrick was moved to Magnolia um, for rehab, and she's in room 261B, 261 Bravo. Uh, as you know, Tom, he fell, broke his hip. He had surgery. He's in Crestwood, and uh, he'll be there, I guess, for some time, uh, for several days, you would think, uh, or more. He's in room 369. And the young baby Wyatt, uh, Pat and Fred's grandson, is progressing and getting better and, and getting into less and less uh, uh, critical care. And so he's hopefully moving toward a normal uh, baby room, if you will, and uh, with normal care and, and everything that goes along with that. Maysville family, thank you so much for the prayers, calls, cards, visits, and food over the past two years, and especially over the past few weeks with Eugene's passing. We appreciate it all. Love, Edna Renfro and family. I'll post this card outside the uh, secretary's office. Don't forget about the bicycles. Uh, bring them in. Mike Broad will soon announce when we're gonna, uh, when the church will put all that together. All the students that are graduating, don't forget uh, to sign up on the list and be getting your pictures ready. The singing happening here uh, Friday the 31st of uh, March 7 to 9, snacks and fellowship. It's from 7 to 9, and then the fellowship will begin at 9 or soon thereafter. Uh, service teams and service team leaders, they are all uh, planning to get people to help. There'll be water during the break, and of course the food and everything that you're bringing, the serving and the hosting, so don't forget all that. Uh, monthly fellowship is coming up this Sunday night. Teams four, service teams 4 and 6 are responsible for uh, setting up, hosting, and then cleaning up, and the breakfast uh, menu has been determined. It's going to be breakfast-based. So this Sunday night, breakfast for supper, that's great. And you can bring casseroles and all whatever you like for breakfast, that'll be the menu. Our closing prayer will be by Brother Chuck Kelms. Our song of encouragement will be song number 67 as Brother Tim comes. If you'd like to follow along in the reading, I'm going to read from the book of Luke, chapter 15, starting in the first verse, Luke 15, 1 and following. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him, and the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you, likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance." If you were present in our auditorium tonight, and many of you in this room now are, were not, we were discussing the book of Hebrews chapter 6. And a very interesting passage where the author of Hebrews described to the brethren there that if they left the faith, were in apostasy, went back into Judaism, that it would be impossible for them to be restored. It's clear when we come to the New Testament and we start talking about the words of Jesus that, that Jesus was interested in the restoration of sinners. And the normal process for those who are involved in sin is that God wants them uh, to be saved. In fact, the book of Luke is not only going to have one, but three different parables of Jesus here in the same chapter of first the lost sheep and then the lost coin. And then if there was any doubt at all, 
that we're talking about people. The longest parable of the group starts in verse 11 and goes through verse 32, and it is what we describe as the prodigal son. And in this, in this story, there is the son who grows up in the father's house, loved and part of the family, part of the father's household, but he goes off into riotous living. And after some time comes home. And the father receives him back and rejoices. God wants us. If we find ourselves lax in our service, if we have allowed the world to keep us from being as faithful as we ought, if we, if we allow ourselves to be involved in those things which are immoral, Paul would write in Galatians chapter 6 in the first verse, Brethren, those of you who are spiritual, who you see your, your brother or your sister caught up in an immoral uh, situation or act, you act in their regard. Restore such a one. Concept of, of God wanting us. And if we fail, wanting us back is the hallmark of the love of God. Now there are times when we, we deny that love and we deny God's desire for our obedience. And rest assured, if we are intent on remaining in rebellion against God, then He will carry out the judgment that He has promised and we will be separated for eternity from the loving God. But that's not His desire. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It may be tonight that you need to change your life in a public way. We want to offer you that opportunity, whether it is to be immersed in water for the mission of your sins, or to have the prayers of the church offered on your behalf. If there is some spiritual need that we can assist you with tonight, come while we stand and sing. Seventy will be our closing song. Nine seventy. Sing this through, and then be led in our closing prayer. <clears throat> oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I.
Let us pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for all the many blessings in life. Thank you for the study this week. That each and every one of us benefit from it, Lord. Thank you for all our many blessings that sometimes we forget about. Thank you for, for Brother Tim and, and for our elders and our deacons, Lord, and, and all our members and everything that, that they do here at the church. Dear Lord, say a special prayer for for sick folks and the ones that's healing at this time, the ones that's having difficulties, that you'll heal them for be your will and bring them back, bring them back to us. Take care of us as we go through the remainder of this week. Keep us all safe. Give us where we fail and where we sin. Christ, name we pray. Amen.